Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Pennsylvania and Berwind. This is episode number 50, and it's been a long time since I've made a video, and it's been a long time since I've talked to you guys. So today, we've got a longer video in store for you, and we're going to do a lot of work around the PNB. We're going to start work here today in Pleasantville. We're going to jump around a little bit. We're going to end up in Grafton. Uh, but overall, I am happy to report that I would say probably around 80% of the route is pretty much done at this point, but we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, since this is a longer video and I'm probably gonna run out of things to talk about, I did ask you guys like months ago to send me some questions which I'm going to attempt to answer during this video. So I've got a whole list of them. I'm gonna try to in interject my, uh, my answers to these questions along with what I'm working on. So first, let's get started talking about where I am and what I'm working on, first of all. So the first thing that we're doing here is getting some work done on Pleasantville. And I had done a video on Pleasantville a while ago, but I never really finished some of the background scenes. So I'm trying to rough in some of the background scenes here and get a better idea of what the flow of this town is gonna look like. And by the way, I'm recording this during rush hour right now. So if you hear some trains, it's from my mic. It's outside my window and not in the game. So you're probably gonna hear that a little bit throughout this. Uh, but anyway, what I wanted to do, really my goal with this video, was to cover as much ground as possible on the PNB and uh, try to get some work done here and there on areas that really just needed it. Because there's a lot of areas that I did some work in, but I left unfinished. And you'll probably notice throughout this that some of the areas that I do work on are still not entirely finished and uh, might require a little bit more detail. But my plan is to do a detail pass later on. And I'll probably do that during uh, maybe some videos and maybe some live streams. But my goal is to get the PNB done in the next few months. I know I'm like a broken record saying this all the time, but I'm really pushing hard to get this done uh, in, in a timely fashion. I really want to get it done. I want to move on to another project. And uh, it's I've just been working on this project for way too long. Like this is episode number 50, which is awesome. Uh, but it's also episode number 50 on the same map. So I'm sure you guys are getting a little bit burned out about it, and I'm a little bit burned out with it as well. I'd like to get back to getting some different content on here, including tutorials and uh, whatever other videos that I can come up with. Uh, I've got some other build videos that I'd like to get started on in the next few months. Um, but, you know, we got to finish this. I have to finish this. I've got it in my head that this has got to get done. And now I am just on the path to <laughs> just getting it done. So today... Uh, starting in Pleasantville, we're working on some of the background scenes here. Um, in any region that we work on today, we're not going to spend a tremendous amount of time with. I kind of give a little bit of an overview of what I was working on. I did some work off camera and some work in between uh, when I was shooting this and when I wasn't shooting it and whatever. You, you'll, you'll get kind of a good overview of what's, what's going on with this. Um, initially, I will admit um, my building is a little rough probably in the beginning of this episode because I'm just getting back into things. I've had a crazy busy year and I really haven't had a whole lot of time to work on the map or really spend more than maybe one or two hours a week working on the PNB. So uh, it, it started off a little bit rough but eventually I get into a bit of a flow state uh, so that's worked out. So here we're heading down the line a little bit and uh, we're heading towards the coal power plant here, which I also need to finish. Um, but I put in this big highway here. I think this is south of Pleasantville. I honestly, I need to re-familiarize myself with the, the direction of the P&B, which way is north, south, east, and west. I, I don't know anymore, but I'm gonna say we are south of Pleasantville, uh, down by the coal mine if you're looking at any of the paperwork or the original P&B. Um, I put in this highway here to divide out the scenes a little bit and uh, sort of divide the Pleasantville area from the uh, the coal power plant. And I thought it would be a good way for trucks and whatever heavy uh, vehicles to actually get to the coal power plant and get in and out or workers to get there. So, and it's a good chance to add a little bit of geography to the PNB, which again, don't try to make heads or tails of where the PNB actually exists in Pennsylvania because um, it's all over the place and it does not quite match up the uh, the actual geography of the game itself. Like I said, the cardinal directions are a little bit off. I might have to do some finagling uh, once the route is done. But uh, anyway, that that's that's a problem for an another day, I suppose. But anyway, I added some of these uh, road signs in here and um, you know some mile markers and stuff like that to suggest that Allegheny and Junior are ahead and um, you know 30 or 40 miles ahead and what the exit is uh, I 
these mile markers and these lengths are kind of arbitrary because I really don't know, but it seemed like uh, it seemed like a good distance to uh, to put it. Um, and additionally, I'll have to name some of these roads because I didn't name any of the roads like, you know, this exit is to this road or whatever. I just said Pleasantville Road or Coombs Road or something like that. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll go back and, and rename that. Like, once I get to the end, and I don't want to say the end, but once I get the main building part of the map done, I like to go back and do a detail pass, and that includes updating the signage and that sort of thing. And that reminds me, one of the last things that I like to do on any of my routes is the signaling and the speeds and the track conditions and so on and so forth. So that will come with time, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, at this point, I'm actually adding traffic to this road because, like a psychopath, I hand laid this road and it was a real pain in the butt. But it was a big learning experience for sure. I don't recommend doing it this way. Um, I do show an, how I did another highway later on in this episode. Um, I put one in up around Highland, I believe, and I did that on camera. Um, but I did add some traffic to this uh, to add a little bit more realism to it. Uh, because obviously what's a highway? What are these roads without any traffic on them, right? So that's one of my goals with this and you can see it here Here's the traffic actually moving and it looks really cool I've got some of the some of the cars taking the exit ramp and going down to the road um, I don't have it all connected so the cars get to the bottom of the exit ramp and just disappear But one of my goals is to have traffic actually moving on the route it might not be the most realistic but I, you know, I'm the type of person who really likes to get immersed in routes and that sort of thing so when a car comes up to an intersection and then it just disappears or it appears out of thin air that breaks my immersion so i would like to add some more invisible road splines and that sort of thing to bring in some more road traffic to the route and and make it a little bit more immersive all right so this seems like a good time to jump into one of the first questions while i do some background work here and add a bit of a farmland scenery uh first question uh comes from uh youtube and it says will the dbev ever be worked into the pnb backstory such as the conrail mainline actually being the pnb uh the answer to that question is no <laughs> uh if that's something that you guys want to do and people have done it merge the pnb and the dbev that's entirely up to you and if you want to create some kind of a backstory that that makes sense that's entirely on you and i'm cool with that but for me they are two totally different projects they're to totally different routes they take place at different times um maybe you could interchange cars together that might be something with like eye portals or, or that sort of thing um but in terms of me integrating the dbev into the pnb and making one large route uh, I have absolutely no plans to do that. They are two totally different things, two different projects, two different uh, storylines altogether in my mind. But I have seen other people uh, actually merge them together, and I think with uh, Trains 22, uh, it might be a little bit easier to do because I think you can lift and and reduce, don't quote me on this because I'm not 100% sure, but I think you could change the height of an entire route uh, or the baseboards as a whole, or maybe it's a little bit easier to do. I, I'm not really sure, but it might be something that's a little bit easier to do in 22. I haven't messed with that myself, but it might be something that I just dreamed of. Uh, but anyway, that answers that question. I will not be merging the two together. Okay, so the next question is, is there a chance of seeing a backdated version of the PNB like with steam and early diesels? Again, that answer is probably going to be a no. Uh, I don't have any plans for that. I totally welcome anybody who wants to take on that project. Uh, but first and foremost, for me, my goal is to get it done in its current state. And the PNB in my mind exists sometime in the 90s, uh, maybe, maybe the late 80s, early 90s, somewhere along there. Um, but I leave it up to you guys. If, if you want to run Steam on it, that's up to you. Steam really doesn't interest me the way that it seems to introduce intro, interest everybody else in the community. Um, but, you know, it, I think Steam excursions and stuff like that will find a place on the PNB. Uh, there is a museum and that sort of thing. And we've been adding in some passenger stops here and there. So some excursion trains will be uh, will be introduced at some point um but overall I'm, i have no plans on backdating the pnb to uh to the steam era or early diesel transition era or anything like that uh so the next question i have here is how many more episodes will you do for the pnb that is uh that's a pretty good question actually um i don't know i'm maybe we're getting kind of close to the end so it might only be about 10 more uh i'm hoping to have things wrapped up sort of soon and 
Uh, to be perfectly honest, I do a lot more work. I get a lot more done when I'm not recording a video or not doing a live stream. Um, so I tend to work a lot faster when I'm doing stuff off camera. So I might continue to do some stuff off camera. And that mostly would include uh, filling in a lot of these areas that are just in between um, big areas like Highland and Grafton. It's just mostly going to be forest. So I'm not going to make a video on that. It's not going to interest anybody. Um, you know, an area between Pleasantville and Highland, that's also going to be a lot of scenery, a lot of forest. Not much that's going to make for good video work. So I'm just going to do that off camera. So, I mean, the answer is I don't know. I'm hoping maybe 10 more would be... That sounds like a good number to me. Maybe I'll try to, like, aim for that. But um, I don't really have a specific number of videos of the PNB that I'm that I'm working towards. Um, it's just basically when it gets done, it gets done. And I'll try to bring you guys in where I can and when I can. Um, that, you know, things that seem interesting. Industries or trackside uh, scenes. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking about how to do transition scenes and how to um, link other scenes together and that sort of thing. So uh, I'll probably try to bring in some videos on that. Okay, so at this point we've moved up the line a little bit towards uh, uh, Pleasantville Junction, and in fact, we're looking at a clip that's a little bit mixed up here. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to fix this because it's going to screw up my voiceover at this point, but uh, w w the long and short is I added a bridge here. This is just before the Moss Creek branch. Um, I think the clip is about to change, which will probably be the beginning of it, um, but you're seeing the end of it here where I added a lot of uh, grasses and yeah here we go so now we're working our way out of Pleasantville up the branch a little bit towards uh, Pleasantville Junction and the Moss Creek Junction and this is the beginning of the uh, the work that I was doing there so I guess we put the uh, the caboose at the front of the train with that one but um, essentially I was just trying to make things interesting here the one thing that I can't stand with doing mainline track and I was complaining about this on discord and with my patrons the other night I just Mainline railroading is so boring for me. It's it's so boring and you know in terms of operating and it's really boring in terms of building it. So I kind of feel like I need to keep things interesting somehow so that there's something to look at. I I hate the I hate the main lines that kind of just look like everything's been copy and pasted and it's just the same group of trees and shrubs and grass over and over and over again. And I get why we have to do that and I had to do it on a number of sections along here personally. But you need to have some scenes sort of mixed in here and there to break up that monotony. Um, but I can't stand having to do this mainline modeling. It's just very monotonous. There's a lot of repetitive grass textures and grasses and shrubs. And it's like, how do you keep this interesting sort of thing? So anyway, I worked in the creek here. I believe this is Moss Creek, if I'm not mistaken, um, that we're crossing over here. And I thought it'd be nice to just have like a double girder bridge um, uh, kind of coming around a bend. And, uh, you know, we've got a, a, a bit of a utility track, or not utility track, utility road next to it, and some tie piles and that sort of thing. Just adds a little bit of visual interest to the scene overall. So I'm going to move on to the next question here, since we're just sort of doing some repetitive scenery work. Uh, will the P&B and other routes that you've made be compatible with Trains 2022? Um, the answer for that is probably yes, because I believe I'm fully moved into Trains 2019 now. I'm not working in Tain anymore. I'm done with Trains A New Era. I've moved on to 2019, and as soon as I'm done with the P&B, uh, I'm moving into Trains 2022. Um, but I believe that any routes that work in Trains 2019 should work in Trains 2022. So I believe the answer to that question is yes. Okay, so we finished that scene, now we're moving up the line here. We are up near the Paint Creek Junction, along the main line. And it was brought to my attention by one of my patrons uh, not too long ago that uh, we were missing a passing siding here between the Paint Creek siding and uh, Highland. So as we work our way up this way, the direction we're headed would go up to Highland. So this is, at this point, I'm trying to work in a passing siding. A lot of people who have operated on the PNB or this particular section of it have complained that uh, it needs a passing siding because there really wasn't any. Uh, so I'm working one in here, and my goal with this particular passing siding was to add a little bit of visual interest to it by making the passing siding a little bit lower than the main line. And I'm not trying to make it look like it's a less used section of track or anything like that. Uh, it's going to be used quite frequently. I just wanted to add some visual uh, contrast to it, because a lot of the PNB is flat. And I attribute that to the fact that I started the PNB, I started building it like 10 years ago when I was 
well into my, well, probably even more than 10 years ago, actually, at this point. Probably almost 15 years ago. So I was a young lad. I was in my early 20s probably back then. And uh, I was not a very good route builder back then. So I did a lot of uh, route building on flat terrain. And um, a lot of the PNB is flat. And I've tried my best to add a little bit more grades in here and there where I can. And, I mean, again, this goes back to my boredom with mainline railroading as well. I'm not tickled by any degree of, like, challenging grades or anything like that. It's just, I'm mostly interested in car movements and getting one train from one area to another. Um, so anyway, a lot of this is flat, and my main goal here with adding the siding and making it a little bit lower was just to add some of that visual interest. And there might even be a bit of a grade through here as well that I added in. Um, and I'm trying to work in some different track as well for some visual interest. Uh, again, it's all in the namesake of keeping things interesting when you're on the main line, and obviously having some functionality for the sake of being able to move trains a little bit more uh, uh, efficiently. Uh, so the next question I have here from YouTube is, will you bring back the route reviews? I would absolutely love to bring back route reviews, and that's something that I would love to do, but I haven't had the time to look at other people's work in ages. So uh, if that's something that you guys want to see and you have some routes that you'd like to suggest, please send me... Uh, on Discord or here or Twitter, wherever you can find me, send me a message with a route that you'd like to recommend that I take a look at. If I like it, I'm not promising that I'm going to do a review of it, but if I like it and I find it interesting and I think that, you know, it's worth sharing with other people, I would absolutely love to bring that back. Um, so back to what I'm doing on screen here. Uh, this is another creek here. I believe this is the Paint Creek. Uh, which is crossing our main line right at the foot of the uh, the double track uh, passing siding that we just put in here. And I'm just trying to mess around. I'm just trying to see what would work. I thought maybe a, a triple girder bridge would be interesting. I end up scrapping the whole thing, so spoiler alert. Um, I end up scrapping the whole thing and just going with a little bit more of a simple design. The thing that made this really complicated was the fact that it was on a bend. And that made it really challenging to line up. I was trying to use these uh, girder bridges from JR that are just uh, like building assets as opposed to uh, track assets to, to sort of help things along. And it kind of works, but things didn't line up. Here's the finished product. I ended up straightening out the track so there was no curve. And I did use the, those assets anyway, and I think the, the effect was pretty good. I'll come back through here in a little bit and uh, definitely work in some more scenery, but that's pretty much how it stands right now. All right, so at this point in the video, we are up in Highland now, and this was recorded, I think, just after the last live stream I did before this video, <laughs> which is, I've been shooting this video for so long that it's, uh, the time doesn't even make sense anymore in my head, but uh, if you've been following me for a little bit, I did a live stream just before uh, I recorded this clip, so some of the stuff that you'll see in this was stuff that we worked on during the live stream. So, essentially, I'm trying to continue work on this area for this video. Um, I'm working on the roads here and bringing in some, some like, actual infrastructure so I know where to put my buildings and how I want to orient them. So we actually are going to spend a little bit more time up here in Highland. I, I kind of got in a good flow up here, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Uh, but the next question I got here I really like. Uh, are you going to do any videos of your end scale layout? Well, uh, that I, is a great question. The answer is maybe. It's a hard maybe, and it's maybe more of a yes. Uh, I did do a short on my end scale layout, just sort of introducing it. Uh, you can check that out under the shorts tab on my uh, my channel here, and uh, it's also on my Instagram. Uh, so right now, I don't have time to do full featured videos, I don't think, of my end scale layout. Um, so I'm going to probably continue to do shorts until I have more time. Now, if suddenly that starts getting some more traction and there's a lot of demand for more video content of my end scale layout, then absolutely I will, you know, bring some more of that in and get that onto the channel. And uh, But I will absolutely be bringing in some more shorts of the end scale layout. Uh, and I'm also going to be introducing sort of a blog, I guess. Not a vlog, but maybe I could do a vlog. I don't know. That might be a lot of work. The problem is video editing just takes a lot of time. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always crunched for time. So I might do a bit of a blog on some of my progress where I go a little bit more in depth with, um, you know, some of the products that I'm using and some of the techniques that I'm using. 
and and that sort of thing. So uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know when I launch that. It'll probably be over winter sometime around Christmas or New Year's. We're, we'll see how it sort of all pans out. Um, all right, so the next question is, uh, what is my favorite railroad and why? Uh, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the Main Central, and my N-Scale layout is based on the New York Cross Harbor Railroad, so probably, I guess, I would say those, but my favorite railroads tend to vary depending on what I'm into at the time. Um, it's usually some sort of a northeastern uh, prototype, but, you know, for the most part, it really varies depending on where I am and what I'm looking at, so... Uh, right now, it's it's the Main Central and um, and the New York Cross Harbor Railroad, but you know I really like Conrail and Penn Central and, and you know any any northeastern prototype. I think I'm a bit of a fan of. All right, so let me talk about what is happening on the screen for a minute here. Uh, I thought that this would be a good place to introduce a uh, a little bit more of a, 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 a vertical contrast. So as I said before, a lot of the PNB is flat, and that includes a lot of the towns, and that's partly because I'm, kind of, you know, I'll admit, I'm kind of scared to build on the terrain in this game and build on hills, because a lot of the buildings don't have foundations, and if you build on a hill, you're probably going to have to put some kind of a foundation in, or as I did here, some sort of a spline to cover the gaps and that sort of thing. Um, but my solution to this is to put in some of these retaining walls and build... Um, I guess multi-tiered sections. So that this was the, sort of the first section that I thought would be a good place to add um, a retaining wall, and I introduce another one in a moment here uh, as I work around this area next to the tracks. But after I got the roads in, uh, I had a really good idea of the flow of the area and how it was going to be shaped. Uh, so it was a little bit easier for me to figure out, okay, where's going to be a good spot for retaining wall, where's going to be a good spot for this area to be higher or lower, and have some more visual contrast, just to make things a little bit more interesting. So you'll see that as this video progresses. Uh, by the time we get to uh, Grafton, I'm building things on retaining walls all over the place. Uh, so uh, that's what's going on in the screen here. But again, just trying to work in some scenic elements around Grafton divide out some of these really gray scenes because there's so many parking lots and so many roads and that sort of thing so it's good to break it up with some scenery and uh you know get some different colors in there so it's not just this gray depressing whatever um let's see the next question i have here is will there be a phase two of the debev ah you know i would like to do another section of the debev or maybe modernize it or backdate it there's a lot of, I have a lot of ideas for the DBEV. I hold the DBEV, if you're not familiar, the Dry Brook in Asopus Valley. Uh, that's my route. It's on uh, JR's website. You can go get it there. Um, whole video series on that, but I hold that very close to my heart. It's a very personal project um, to me, so I would love to expand on it, but I don't necessarily have any plans at the moment. Maybe one day I'd like to jump back in. I do have a lot of ideas floating around in my head, and there doesn't seem to be any shortage of suggestions. Uh, so that's something that I would definitely love to do. Uh, on screen here, I'm beginning to work in some details. This seems like a good opportunity to bring in some trackside details. Uh, so I've got some forklifts and some pallets and some boxes and crates and stuff like that just to add a little bit of visual noise to this area. This is the one area during this video that I spent like literally any amount of time detailing. Uh, for the most part, the rest of this video is getting big infrastructure and big footprint stuff down. And like I said, I'll come back and add more details as time permits and as inspiration permits and that sort of thing. But my main goal lately is to just cover as much territory as possible as much as possible. This next question I think is a really great question, and it's a really loaded question. I'm going to try to keep it brief, but here it is. What got you started in trains with a Z, so the game? Uh, the answer to that is, again, it's a loaded answer, uh, but the short answer is that I was probably 18 years old, and I was getting ready to go away to college. I had an N-scale layout in my parents' garage, and I wanted to continue on with the hobby. Obviously, I couldn't take my N-scale stuff to college with me, but I wanted to continue to work on stuff. Uh, so, I got, I came across the copy of Train's UTC, and then uh, that was pretty much what got me started in it. I'm going to continue answering that question in a moment, but I want to talk about what I'm doing on the screen here. So, I'm adding another highway in... Well, not another highway. I'm adding a highway into the Highland area here. And I'm not going to go through and show you this entire process because I know a lot of you guys are very bored with it. But 
I'm doing this on camera because during my live stream, a lot of you guys were asking me how to do scenery transitions or to um, blend scenes together. I think the question was, how do, you, how do you transition scenes? And my answer to that, and one of my favorite ways to do that is with a big highway. And that is a great way to create a scenic division between a city area and a country area or a city area and a town area or pretty much anything. Um, you can use a highway to just split any sort of major area and again i'm doing a hand laid highway i'm trying to give you an overview of how i'm doing it this time because the first time i did it was an absolute mistake um, but i'm putting all the splines on the ground first and then i'm going to set the height as opposed to trying to do it all in midair so i'm laying out all the lanes this is going to be a six lane road i think and uh, i'm not doing any exits or merging lanes or anything like that at least right now on this it's just going to be sort of a through highway but uh, my advice is if you're looking for some sort of a scenic division or transition area, use a highway because at least in the United States, when, when the highways were built, they split up towns and communities and cities very, very badly. I, I'm not, a, you know, a city planner and there's a lot of other people on YouTube who would be able to give you like full on explanations about how this was all done and why it was done. Uh, but when we put in our highways, it divided a lot of communities and a lot of towns and a lot of uh, regions and created sort of these big, uh, real, realistic, real transition zones between, uh, between, uh, locales. So that is a great thing that you can kind of add into your routes if you're doing, uh, if you're doing a U.S. route, which obviously I'm doing here. Um, but anyway, that, I just wanted to just touch on that for a minute. I have to do a hand-laid road, or I'm sorry, a hand-laid bridge here, so, uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can fit this bridge, because it's only so wide, uh, with this road this big. So my solution was to just do two bridges next to each other. So you'll see me uh, do that. I want to get back to answering this question here. What got you started in trains with a Z? Uh, so to continue on with that story, I, uh, I wanted to be able to maintain my interest in the hobby of model railroading uh, when I didn't have the space to do so. And uh, as I got out of college and got, a, got into the real world and got my life on my own and so on and so forth, I moved into an apartment in New York City and I never had the space for an actual model. So over the years, the virtual model became my, uh, you know, supplement for the real thing. And uh, to be honest, now I find myself at an interesting crossroads because I have a little bit of space for my N-Scale layout. And uh, I really enjoy doing the N-Scale stuff. I'm a more tactile person. I like working with my hands a little bit more than I like being on the computer. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how this all sort of translates in the future. Um, but anyway, that, I guess that's the short story of what got me started in the game. I, I can tell you, I, I've been playing this probably since 2001 or 2002. Um, I graduated high school in 2003, if you're curious. And I think that's about the time that I got into the game was like 2003. Uh, anyway, back to what's going on on the screen here. I gave up with the idea of putting pavement splines underneath these uh, these road markings here, and I'm just going full-blown uh, texture, and it's a lot easier to work with when you don't have so many layers of splines. Um, you, obviously, right now I've got this big plateau on the side, but that is going to get integrated and softened and, and spread out, as you'll see here. Um, so I, I recommend if you're going to do a, a, a hand-laid highway this way, this is the best way to do it. Put it on the grid, set the height that you need it to be, and then just do a texture underneath as opposed to trying to put another texture spline underneath. Obviously, I'm gonna add in some other texture splines underneath, uh, in including different tones of asphalt in patches just to kind of break things up, um, but I'm not gonna do like the whole underside of it. So moving right along with the next question. How do you come up with what the entire route will look like? I've seen you lay down track for miles upon miles and I struggle with filling up the initial square piece of land. That is also a really good question. And the answer to that is that I'm just making this up as I go. And it's a lot based on what I see when I'm out in the real world. And for the PNB, I mean, there's a whole bunch of paperwork that sort of outlines what is supposed to go where. So I use that as my script, essentially, um, in terms of like what, where I should put this town or that town. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm just making this up as I go. And it's a lot of it is just based on looking at Google Earth or things that I see when I'm out and about. Uh, currently, I work up in Secaucus in New Jersey, which is a very industrial area, so I think most of my industrial inspiration probably comes from my commute to work, going through Newark, New Jersey, and Secaucus. 
and dealing with all of that. Seeing all of the warehouses and the factory buildings and currently I'm working in a warehouse. So, you know, I've got that as a perfect example of how things are supposed to be laid out. Um, so the PMB is probably not the best example of that. Um, the DBEV, the Dry Brook route, would probably be a better example of me really envisioning a completely fictional thing. But again, that had a prototype that inspired what I, where the direction of the route was going to go. It was heavily inspired by the Catska Mountain branch of the New York Central Railroad up in the Catska Mountains in upstate New York. So I had an actual prototype that I was interested in modeling, and I didn't want to model necessarily the the exact prototype for real, so I came up with my own fictional story behind it and used the prototype to guide some of my decisions about how it was going to be arranged. So my advice would be if you're having a hard time route building, find a prototype that interests you and just base some of your build on on that actual prototype. There's nothing wrong with that. You could even copy whole areas and uh, nobody's really going to know that you're doing that. Like for all you guys know, what I'm doing right here is being modeled after a real place that I drive past every day, uh, which could be true. It could not be, but nobody's ever going to know. So that would be my advice is to get on Google Earth um, and just go outside and just kind of pay attention to what the world looks like and how it's shaped. And even I'm still learning. I'm not a master at any of this. Sometimes I look at what other people's work is and it just blows my mind. I'm like, man, I would have never thought to build this that way or lay the track that way or put the scenery down. I can tell you my biggest mistake with the PNB was letting the track define the scenery. Whereas in reality, it would be the other way around. The scenery defines how the track is laid. And by that, I mean the geography, where the mountains are, where the plains are, and that sort of thing. On the PNB, I laid all the track, and now I'm trying to figure out what to put where around it to make it interesting. Uh, I don't think that that's the right way to do it. Uh, it is a way to do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. When I did the Drybrook route, it was the opposite way. I had all the, the geography figured out, and I built the track within the confines of that geography, and that helped me quite a bit. So continuing on with my idea of adding some more visual contrast to the Highland area, I've added this road that crosses over top of the train tracks. It is adjacent to that highway, and I'm gonna connect this to a housing area on the other side of Highland. Uh, I don't think, I didn't work on it in this video, and I haven't worked on it since I've done this video, but. Uh, on the other side of the tracks where the brewery is, behind that is a bit of a housing development, so I'm probably going to connect all that together. Um, so I did another hand laid road here and connected it together. I used uh, some retaining wall splines to create a retaining wall. And I've sort of just shoehorned in this warehouse here, and I'm, I'm going to bring in a couple of tractor trailers and that sort of thing. Uh, just to add some more, like, you know, the whole world isn't necessarily built on a grid, right? So I want to break that grid as much as possible, and I am really a, a bad culprit when it comes to building on the grid. I'm, like, addicted to it. <laughs> it's just such a bad habit. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to break up that grid pattern and add some more visual interest in the process as I can, as I can do that. So that's sort of my goal here and my goal throughout the rest of this video. Uh, so we're running out of time in terms of the time lapse. So I'm to try to answer a couple more questions here. Uh, the next question is, what local train on the PNB has been your favorite to run? Uh, I think my favorite local to run on the PNB is probably the Vani local or the Old Town local. And uh, I think it's because both of those are sort of shorter runs and uh, they have a lot of switching involved. Uh, so let me jump back to that. Now we are up in Grafton at this point in the video. So uh, just pay attention to what's going on here and I'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, but the Vani Local and the Old Town Local are probably my two favorites to operate. Again, because of the amount of switching that they have and their short distance. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of really long mainline runs and like uh, transfer runs from like yard to yard, let's say. Like if I'm operating on the PNB, any kind of yard transfer is done with AI trains. So I try to keep away from that. I like a lot of switching. I'd rather be in the yard doing the switching and building the trains and that sort of thing than uh, moving them from one area to the next. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit more about what I'm doing on the screen here. We're up at Grafton and uh, I needed some sort of a background scene uh, for this area. We are, if you saw when we flew up here, uh, we're kind of behind where the end of the track is. So this is sort of like one of the last areas that you would see. 
uh, if you were driving a train up into the uh, the portal up there, which, you know, that's really just for interchange traffic, so you wouldn't be up there anyway. But this is a background scene nonetheless, and I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with it um, and uh, sort of make this look a bit like a uh, like an old downtown or, you know, uh, like a, a historical district. You know, the roads are in a grid, but they're not perfectly straight and this sort of thing. Um, and I wanted to include this little area that I'm doing here, which is sort of a shopping slash like cafe area. And this is definitely modeled and inspired after, you know, a lot of what we see today. Um, I don't want to say during COVID times because this was happening before the pandemic. Uh, but where you see in like in New York City and a lot of big cities now, they have areas of main roads closed and it's set up for pedestrian foot traffic and cafes and bars and that sort of thing and people to hang out outside. So that's what I'm trying to build here. And uh, that's what I was inspired by. And I thought it would be a fun little thing, a fun little Easter egg to tuck into the back background scene here. Uh, so you'll see some of the techniques that I'm using here. Uh, I use the JR loading dock uh, in this foreground or whatever bottom area, and I raised up the buildings behind it. So this adds a little bit, uh, again, of uh, visual vertical contrast and sort of a nice area to set up, uh, you know, some coffee shop or a bar or a restaurant or something like that. So uh, I just had some fun with the scene and it's entirely, you know, negligible in terms of the overall look of the PNB. But this is the kind of stuff that I really want to be doing, is doing these little scenes like this. But the PNB is just so big that I have to focus on covering ground right now. So uh, once I get the bulk of that done, then I can come through and do more of these little detail scenes like this. But my main idea was to uh, have a bit of a historic area with some outdoor seating, outdoor dining, and, and that sort of thing. And maybe this area, uh, it's right at the, the port, it's right near the Grafton ports. <clears throat> I thought maybe this would be a good spot for people who work in the ports to live and to commute down there from. So uh, that was sort of my motivation there. Uh, let's see, I think I have one more question that I can answer. All right, I'm gonna try to get two more in before we jump over to the time lapse. Uh, the first one is, what's a model you, you wish there was more of in trains? And that is a short, quick answer, Alcos. Alco diesels, not Alco steam locomotives. I wish there were more Alco models for this game because I'm a big Alco fan and I would love to see more of that. Uh, in terms of other models, maybe more like industrial things. Um, I'm really getting tired personally of using a lot of the same industrial buildings, which is why I've been porting some of them from Turbo Squid into the game myself. Um, but I think the, the short and quick answer is I wish there were more Alco locomotives, diesel locomotives uh, in the game. And if you are a, a modeler and you'd like to take a commission, I would be happy to pay for some commissions for some more Alcos. Uh, the next question is, what inspired you to continue making larger than life layouts? Uh, insanity. Just absolute insanity. No, I, I don't know. I, I tend to just get carried away with things, and that just... If, if I don't have an end goal in mind, I will just continue to work on something, and it'll just grow way beyond, uh, you know, any expe expectation I've had. Uh, so, personally, I kind of have to pay attention to... Uh, how long I've been building for or what it is. I need to have a beginning, a middle, and an end set in my mind. Otherwise, it'll just never get finished, uh, which <laughs> can kind of be seen here with the PNB, but we're getting close. We are getting close to the end. Um, and I guess the last question that I could do here is, uh, what would be the best website to get content from, in your opinion? Um, there is so much trains content out there. I think right now the best website you can go to is Jointed Rails website. Um, that's a great place for rolling stock and freight locomotives and or diesel locomotives and freight trains, so on and so forth. Uh, that's where you can find a couple of my routes, including the PNB Phase One. Um, there's also my website, approachmedium.com, where I've got some assets there. I'm also hosting some of the TBS legacy assets and uh, some more stuff, so check that out. Um, there's also Trains Forge. I would recommend them if you're looking for anything that is more Steam related. And um, Reggie's Trains isn't really around anymore, so I can't really recommend him. But uh, his stuff was great when he was still around, and I think that that is probably about it for... Uh, for uh, websites that I would recommend. But that pretty much brings us, we've got one more clip left that we're gonna go through here, so I'll just talk about what's going on on the screen. Um, again, just trying to work in a few more details around the area. I'll try to show up this area in the cinematics, I think I do. 
Um, but, you know, just some gravel piles, some tie piles, like there's some work being done over here. Uh, just to add some more visual interest, there's so much work that I have to do in the Grafton Docks area that it is just sort of ridiculous that I'm even taking the time to, <laughs> to do this stupid little background. It's not a stupid little background scene, but it's negligible uh, in, the, in the overall PNB land. But anyway, I'm hoping to have most of this done very soon, and then you guys will be able to check it out for yourselves and see... Uh, you know, take it for a spin. But if you are interested in seeing any of the work that I'm doing in progress uh, or any little updates like that, consider checking out my Patreon. This is the only plug I will do for Patreon, but you can head over to patreon.com slash approach medium and uh, take a look at what I have on offer. I have multiple tiers over there with assets, uh, early access assets or early access to the PNB or any other routes that I'm working on and early access to my videos and stuff like that. So check it out if that's something that you're interested in supporting me and, and what I do. Um, going forward, I've got some more projects lined up. I think I might have touched on that in the beginning of this video, but I do have some more projects that I plan on pushing out in the next few months, uh, as well as finishing up the PNB. And uh, yeah, there's going to be more assets, more videos, and more fun, fun, fun. So hopefully, uh, you know, I, hopefully I can keep pace with it. I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, but uh, again, I get a little carried away sometimes. Uh, but this is the last little detail that I'm working in here. These uh, pennant splines or something like that. So anyway, you'll see it all in the cinematics. Guys, I'd like to thank you so much for sticking around for 50 episodes of the PNB. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing some more episodes for you guys and completing the PNB. And I can't wait to get it out to you guys so I can hear some of your feedback from it and you guys can also enjoy it. So thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you for all the feedback and everything. And I'll see you guys in the next one.